Greetings, everyone. In this video, we are going to just talk about how to make histograms in Excel. So here we are with a collection of data. I've got a bunch of men with their ACT scores. So there are a whole bunch of them. If I scroll all the way to the bottom here, there's 289 people. I've got their ACT score for every single one. I want to make a histogram of this data. So as we've probably done before, I'm going to go to data and data analysis. And you'll notice in the data analysis box, you've probably used descriptive statistics and these other things before, but it has a histogram button. So if I press OK on histogram, and now let's just follow all the ideas. I'm going to delete anything that was in there before because who knows what I was doing before. All right, input range, that's the data itself. And I'm going to highlight the label as well as the data. So I'm just clicking and dragging and we got a lot of data to go through here. There are faster ways to do this, but this is certainly one way to gather all your data. All right, there's my last one. Okay, now the next thing it asks for is bin range. Well, now wait a minute, I haven't done anything setting up bins. A histogram is designed to take the data and chunk it into small bins or small buckets, if you think of it that way. So I've got to hit cancel. I need to do some work outside of this. Let's do a few things. I need the bins. Let's see what we have. I'm going to get how, much, how many data points I have. So I'm going to just count equals count of all the numbers in column B in this case. So there's 289 numbers. And if I go too fast, please just pause me and, and look at this again. Let's also get some basic information about the, um, the data itself. So I'm going to say, let's say the max of the data. It's going to say equals max of all the data in column B. Let's say the min is the minimum of all the data in column B. And let's get the range. Now I know I could have done this with uh, descriptive statistics, but I only really need these couple of things. I don't need all the other descriptive statistics. So my range was 13. That means the distance from the minimum to the maximum was 13. Well, okay, so if I'm going to put these into small discrete categories, maybe I should go by twos. And maybe I should start a little lower than 20, go a little higher than 33, and go by twos. So my bins, I'm going to start at, let's say, 18, and go by twos. So 18, 20, 22, 24. And I'm already kind of bored with that, so I'm just going to highlight these. And Excel is cool enough, it'll actually recognize the pattern. So if I just grab the bottom right hand corner and drag, I'm going to stop at 36 because 33 is my max score and this is an ACT score. So 36 is the biggest we can do anyway. Now let's go back to data analysis. I'm going to do a histogram. Okay, so I'm going to redo my input range. So I'm going to grab the title here and drag all the way down. There was the last one. One of these days I'll get the last one. There it is. Okay. Bin range. Now the bin range is the list that I just made right here. So if I click into bin range, grab the title at the top as well, highlight my bin range. So now I've got the input is B1 to B290. Bin range is G1 to G11, that, that all looks right. My output range is just where does it want to spit out anything that comes out of this little macro. So I'm going to stick it just to the right of the bins and press OK. So what it does for me is it says, OK, 18 and below, there was nobody there. 20 down to 18, there was one person there. 22 down to 20, there were 17 people there and so on and so forth. Um, now let's make the histogram. So I'm going to highlight all of these frequencies, go into insert, a bar graph. So it's just a bar graph, but it's going to be a special bar graph. Here's our bar graph. So this is our collection of different um, ACT scores. But you'll notice that we don't have the right labels across the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that 
select data, and then in the horizontal category axis labels, I'm going to click in there and highlight the bins. And then press OK. Now it changes it to 18, 20, 22, 24, and so on. Something else that I like to do with the histogram is I'm going to double click on the bars so it brings up this. I'm going to set the gap to zero. So I slide this bar all the way down to zero so it squeezes them together. What this allows me to do as a reader of this graph is to say, well, there's probably no gaps between these data. I've just clustered the data into bins. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the border, make it a solid line, make it black, so that if I happen to have two adjacent bars, I can actually tell the difference. Last but not least, we make this look nice. So let's see, this is a histogram of ACT scores just for the men that were in our study. And then I can come over here and let's put a vertical axis on there. We're going to call that frequency. So this is how often that happens. So in this bin, there was one person that had a 22. That's that dude right there. In the 20 to 22s, I had 17 people and notice that the bin is just shy of 20. And so on and so forth. I suppose we should also, if I click into here, go into my chart and add a horizontal axis label. So these are ACT scores where my bin width is two points. So this tells the person who's reading the chart that every two points from 20 to 22, I just accumulated how many people in my study uh, had an ACT of that, of that uh, value. Hope this has helped. Have fun.